this region, it's home to a lot of smart people working in science, medicine and innovation. There are brain surgeons, rocket scientists, Nobel Prize winners. The Pulse connects these folks and lay people for down-to-earth conversations about how their work affects all of us. We're giving people the chance to ask a simple question. So, what do you do? I'm the Senior Vice President of Business Development and Technology R&D at Graphene Frontiers. Graphene is this really cool new nanomaterial. It's called the miracle material of the 21st century. It's uh, the first two-dimensional material and has exceptional properties such as electrical conductivity. So when you say 2D, you mean it's completely flat, like it's not what we would normally see as a 3D image? Exactly, so it doesn't have a, any depth to it. Mm -hmm. It's purely two-dimensional. The thickness of the material is one atom thick. What are the potential uses of graphene? So because it contains so many different exceptional material properties, one of the key ones is electrical conductivity. And that is really what we're taking advantage of in developing novel healthcare biosensors at Graphene Frontiers. So when you say that you're using it for biosensors, what does that mean? What does that look like? So for example, right now you go to a doctor and to get your routine physical exam, part of it is getting the blood work done to screen for cholesterol or other different things, right? Um, so you go to a centralized laboratory to get your blood drawn and then they process it and send the results back to your physician. So there are certain situations in life where, uh, for example, when a person is having a heart attack, it's hard to tell whether they're having a heart attack or some other manifestation or like uh, some other disease. And it's very time sensitive because you need to diagnose it very quickly. So you can't send the blood work to a centralized laboratory to come back in a couple days because by then the patient could be dead. Yeah. So what you would have is uh, the paramedics would have a specific cartridge and a reader device in their ambulance and as the person is being taken to the emergency room, you could put a drop, draw the blood in the uh, ambulance, put it in the cartridge, get the results, and then um, diagnose whether a person has it or not. And by the time they get to the hospital, they're treated for the appropriate um, disease. So you said graphene doesn't have depth. Um, so how exactly do you make it and, and handle it? Yeah, so one of the main uh, current hurdles to overcome in industry because graphene is really being explored for applications in many different industries, flexible display, supercapacitors, batteries, and biosensors. Uh, so actually really making high quality of graphene is one of the key things to enable all of those applications. So here at Graphene Frontiers, we grow our own graphene material. Uh, we have a furnace that goes up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. This is the furnace where we grow the graphene. Wow. And, it's, and we flow different gases through the furnace, um, which then get deposited. The carbon gets deposited onto the copper, and you get a single layer formation of graphene, which is a hexagonal carbon lattice. So the copper is the base upon which you would put the, the graphene. Exactly. So actually, we put the copper in there. This has nothing on it. Okay. And we flow different gases, argon, hydrogen, and methane, where the carbon is derived from. Mm -hmm. And a single layer of graphene is deposited on that copper. Okay. So what you get is gas flowing through the furnace, heats up to 1,000 degrees Celsius, and deposits onto the copper in a single layer. And the crystal structure, the atom structure, really looks like a chicken wire fence. Okay. So it's a uh, six sides hexagonal uh, structure. Before you separate the graphene from the copper though, because graphene is so thin, you want to put another layer of another polymer on top of it in order to be able to handle it. And then we transfer it onto a different substrate, a silicon oxide substrate. And while you can't directly touch the graphene, you can actually see it um, as a different shape. Yeah, so this is graphene. Like, yeah, okay. Yep. And then you're able to handle it, and it's mar much more rigid. Um, than just graphing on its own. Are each one of these squares an individual uh, sort of microchip? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Wow. Each of these is an individual transistor, 
And what you can do is, on a single chip this size, mm -hmm. there are, you can sense as many as 80 different biomarkers at the same time. On behalf of everyone out there who's, who's really excited for these possibilities, I, I thank you for this. It's, it's really, really cool. Thank you. I think technology is really cool and really fascinating, uh, and I really enjoy my work. Uh, I think the things that we're doing with graphene technology and enabling healthcare for people is super motivating to me. As a woman in science, like I, I personally am encouraged by you. I, I think that you're a rock star. I think you're awesome. <laughs> um, can you tell me sort of how it feels for you to, to be on the cutting edge of this technology um, and, and really sort of leading your field in, in the development of something that could be revolutionary to the way that people receive healthcare, ideally. Mm -hmm. While I think the engineering field is still primarily male dominated, I think there has been a lot of changes that took place that make it much more accessible to women now. And I'm very, very encouraged by it. And here at Graphene Frontiers, we've mentored um, high school kids, college kids, uh, and they come, they're super interested, and they ask such great questions about graphene, about nanotechnology, and it's really cool interacting with them, because I think it's uh, really inspiring them to study the science, and you know, sometimes you read it in the book and you're like, oh, this is cool, but until you see it, you're not fully immersed into it, and I think that really gives them that bridge between um, science theoretically and its applications.